it sounds like a game of stump the preacher. But you only have to consider the outcome to know that this was no game. If Jesus had said yes, he would have been guilty of blasphemy. Notice that they didn't ask him if it was permissible to pay the tax, but if it was lawful. That is, was it in accordance with the laws of Moses? The very first law of Moses, as you may recall, is to love the Lord your God and serve only him. And yet Caesar had set himself up as a god. The coin Jesus asked for had his image on it, and around the edge, this inscription, Tiberius Caesar, son of the divine Augustus. Caesar was making himself out to be the son of God, or at least the son of a God. And as any of the religious authorities would tell you, that's blasphemy. Should you pay taxes to a blasphemer? Was it lawful? Wouldn't it be the same as condoning his blasphemy? If Jesus had said yes, the religious authorities might have shown him then and there what they did to blasphemers. But if Jesus had said no, he would have been guilty of insurrection. Palestine was part of the Roman Empire. It enjoyed the protection of Rome as all those soldiers in the streets reminded the people. Many of these pilgrims who had come to Jerusalem for the Passover had traveled on paved Roman roads. Their taxes helped pay for all that. If Jesus had said that paying taxes to Rome was unlawful, the Roman soldiers might have dragged him away and revolution might have broken out in that moment. Because among the crowd were people who were hostile to Caesar. Some of them, called zealots, were ready to use violence, if necessary, to overthrow the Roman government. All they needed was an excuse. What do you think, Jesus? Should we pay taxes to Caesar or not? There he stood, surrounded by zealots who were ready for revolution, Herodians who were loyal to the Roman government, Pharisees who felt that Caesar was a blasphemer, and Roman soldiers who were on his payroll. You could have heard a pin drop. But Jesus, who was aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? The Greek word for test is the same as the word for tempt. The word for malice, the same as the word for evil. It suggests that scene in the wilderness where Jesus was being tempted by the evil one. And it makes it clear that this is no game the religious authorities are playing with Jesus. Not just another round of stump the preacher. This was a cosmic conflict with the forces of good and evil lined up against each other in the whole city holding its breath, waiting to see what the outcome would be. Who knows how long they waited before Jesus sighed and said, You hypocrites, show me the coin used for the tax. And right there, in the temple precincts, somebody produced a denarius, a Roman coin stamped with Caesar's idolatrous image, and that blasphemous inscription, Son of the Divine Augustus. So, Jesus said, whose image is this? Whose inscription? Caesar's, they answered. And suddenly it seemed so obvious. Then give it to him, Jesus said. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. It was the perfect answer. It wasn't blasphemy or insurrection. It raised the original question to a whole new level. On one hand, Jesus was saying, yes, it was lawful to give to Caesar what belonged to him. And I hope you will remember that at tax time. But on the other hand, he had forced his hearers to consider what was God's and what belonged to him. And I want you to think about that 
right now. So let me play a little game of stump the congregation. What is God's? What does belong to Him? And are we or are we not giving it to Him? I'd love for each of you to answer that question for yourselves, and I hope you will, but I've been thinking about it for a week now. I have a head start. This is what I think. I don't think God wants from us the same thing Caesar wants. I think what belongs to God and what God really wants is not so much our money as our hearts. Now, I know the budget team will be disappointed with that answer. (laughs) They were kind of hoping that I would say, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and then write down that same number on a check and give it to God. Through your local church, please. They probably wish I would tell you that. But when I read the Gospels carefully, it appears Jesus has no earthly interest in earthly goods, but almost every interest in the human heart. Later in this same chapter, he will say that the most important thing in the world is not what we give, but who and how we love. So let me ask you to imagine something. In this episode from the Gospel, Jesus asks for a coin. He takes it in his hand. He feels its weight. He holds it up and asks his questioners whose image is on it and whose inscription. And they say Caesar's. Now imagine this. Instead of a coin, what if Jesus asked for a heart? Your heart. What if he held it in his hand and felt its weight? Whose image would he find on it? Whose inscription would be there? This is not a game. And just as the time those religious authorities came to Jesus, the answer is more important than the question. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, when you look at our hearts, may you find your image there and an inscription written that says, Jesus is Lord. May we live in such a way that the whole world knows whose we are. And then help us give to God what is God's. For we ask it in His name. Amen.